Welcome to our The China Briefing program. Today, we have some fascinating stories lined up for you. First up, Tiger Brokers has introduced an AI powered trade bot, Tiger GPT, which promises to save investors a lot of time by sifting through financial data and providing investment advice. However, it's not without its flaws, as inaccuracies still persist, making human oversight crucial. Next, the International Testing Agency is gearing up for the Paris Olympics with a high-tech approach to catch potential cheaters. Doping has long been a shadow over the games, and this year is no different with recent scandals involving Chinese and Russian athletes. Lastly, Missouri's legal system is in the spotlight as Attorney General Andrew Bailey fights to keep individuals, whose murder convictions were overturned, behind bars. This controversial stance has sparked a heated debate on justice and political motives. Please stay tuned for detailed coverage. South China Morning Post, a year after its launch, Tiger Broker's AI-powered trading bot, Tiger GPT, has proven to be a significant time saver for individual investors by efficiently processing vast amounts of financial data. The bot, which was introduced in May 2023 by the Beijing-based brokerage, sifts through real-time stock prices, exchange filings, and analyst reports to provide quick answers on specific stocks. Despite its time-saving benefits, Tiger GPT is not without flaws, as it sometimes produces inaccurate information, a common issue with generative AI. The company has been working on improving the bot's accuracy by feeding it financial data spanning the last decade. Available in markets like Singapore, Hong Kong, and Australia, Tiger GPT has about 70,000 users, primarily in Singapore and Hong Kong. The company is also in constant contact with regulators to ensure compliance, and it aims to eventually enable the bot to generate its own analyses to identify early investment trends. South China Morning Post, the history of performance-enhancing drugs, PEDS, in the Olympics is marred by scandals and state-sponsored doping, with notable cases from East Germany, Russia, and China. The first known Olympic doping case involved Swedish pentathlete Hans Gunnar Liljenwall, who lost his medals at the 1968 Mexico Olympics for alcohol use. East Germany's systematic doping of athletes, particularly female swimmers, came to light after the Berlin Wall fell, revealing that around 9,000 athletes had been doped since 1968. Russia's doping scandal was exposed by Grigory Rodchenkov, who revealed a state sponsored program during the 2014 Sochi Olympics. China's doping issues resurfaced when 23 swimmers tested positive for trimetazidine before the Tokyo Olympics, though they were cleared by a Chinese investigation. One of the most infamous doping scandals involved Canadian sprinter Ben Johnson, who was disqualified after winning the 100-meter gold at the 1988 Seoul Games. His case debunked the myth that PEDs were only an issue in the communist bloc, highlighting the widespread nature of doping in sports. Associated Press Recent weeks have seen Missouri judges overturn two murder convictions, but Attorney General Andrew Bailey has fought against the release of the individuals involved. Christopher Dunn, who was set to be freed after a judge found evidence of his actual innocence, remains in prison due to Bailey's appeal. Similarly, Sandra Hemi spent over a month in prison after her conviction was overturned, with Bailey's office appealing her release. Political scientists suggest Bailey's actions are aimed at appearing tough on crime to secure votes ahead of a challenging primary race. Bailey's opposition to innocence claims is part of a broader pattern, as he has also opposed the release of Lamar Johnson and is fighting against the exoneration of Marcellus Williams, who faces execution despite DNA evidence suggesting his innocence. Bailey's tenure has been marked by controversial legal actions, including suing Planned Parenthood, challenging President Joe Biden, and attempting to restrict access to gender-affirming care. Critics argue that his actions undermine the legal system and harm innocent individuals. SCMP Opinion The prospects for a third medical school in Hong Kong have brightened as the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, CUST, and Imperial College London are in serious discussions about the project. A source revealed that the two institutions are working on a detailed proposal to present to authorities by the month's end. This initiative is timely for a city grappling with a shortage of medical professionals. While efforts to attract talent from the mainland and abroad have helped, 
Developing local talent is seen as a more sustainable solution as global demand increases and populations age. The existing medical schools at the University of Hong Kong and Chinese University have already boosted their annual intake and plan to launch new graduate programs. A third medical school could diversify training offerings, potentially setting a unique curriculum. Anthony Wu Tingyuk, former chairman of the Hospital Authority, suggested targeting students with a first degree to recruit top global talent. This approach would prevent competition with other medical schools for students taking the city's university entrance exam. Additionally, a third institution could create medical sector opportunities across Asia, including the Greater Bay Area Development Zone. FCUST President Professor Nancy I.P. Yakyu has sought support from Beijing, which envisions Hong Kong as a biomedical hub. Both Polytechnic University and Baptist University have also shown interest in establishing medical schools. However, any new medical program will require navigating numerous academic, logistical, and regulatory hurdles to ensure the sector's long-term health. South China Morning Post Peter Phillips, son of Princess and a nephew of King Charles, has publicly introduced his new girlfriend, Harriet Sperling, after his separation from Lindsay Wallace. The couple was seen together at the badminton horse trials in May, accompanied by Phillips's children, Savannah and Isla. A source told The Sun that they appeared smitten, and Phillips was beaming. Sperling has already met Queen Camilla and King Charles, with the couple displaying affection at Royal Ascot. Sperling, an NHS pediatric nurse specialist and freelance writer, has aristocratic roots and is a single mother. She is passionate about early brain development in babies and has written about her life as a single mum, reflecting on the unique bond with her daughter. The couple has been spotted at high profile events including Wimbledon and the Royal Charity Polo Cup. If their relationship progresses to marriage, Sperling would be the first NHS nurse to join the royal family. Her aristocratic lineage includes connections to the Courage Brewing dynasty and the Duke of Gloucester through former marital ties. Sperling's background and Phillips's royal connections have made their relationship a topic of public interest. South China Morning Post. Gap years are becoming increasingly popular, not just among young people but also among older adults and families. My daughter's return from a gap year, transformed and full of stories, inspired me to explore this trend further. The year is a significant unit of time for personal growth and adventure, making it an ideal subject for limited-run serial podcasts. One such podcast, My Year in Mensa, follows comedian Jamie Loftus as she joins the High IQ Society Mensa, offering a humorous yet insightful look at intelligence and elitism. Hitman for Hire documents the life of pro cricketer David Wees, who navigates the challenges of being a franchise cricketer post-Brexit. A Year to Change Your Mind, based on Dr. Lucy Maddox's book, provides practical, evidence-based tips for leading a more thoughtful life, structured around a calendar year. The Habitat explores a year-long mock Mars habitat experiment, focusing more on the social dynamics than the science. Zero to Travel discusses the growing trend of adult gap years, with host Jason Moore interviewing Brooke Thayer, who left a high-paying job to travel the world. Finally, Stuff You Should Know delves into the traditional gap year experience, offering a casual yet informative take on a variety of topics, from unsolved mysteries to everyday trivia. These podcasts highlight the diverse experiences and benefits of taking a year off to explore new horizons. South China Morning Post, as the Paris Olympics approach, Chinese manufacturers have already claimed a significant victory, securing their place as key suppliers for the event. From cutting-edge sports equipment to charming souvenirs, Chinese-made goods will be ubiquitous. Sonic Composite Technology, led by Yang Zixing, stands out as the sole provider of windsurfing equipment for the Games, showcasing China's dominance in mass production and innovation. Yang attributes their success to the rapid iteration of new materials and processes, setting them apart from global competitors. The Olympics will feature the IQFOL format in windsurfing, a testament to the advanced technology that Chinese companies bring to the table. Despite efforts to diversify manufacturing to countries like Vietnam and India, China's comprehensive supply chain network remains unparalleled, ensuring timely and high-quality deliveries. Paul Tai of Manetti Group highlights China's competitive edge, 
noting that the country's manufacturing sector is poised to integrate more artificial intelligence and automation. This transformation is supported by mature corporate social responsibility systems and a well-established production environment. The Paris Olympics will see a myriad of Chinese-made products, from mascots and souvenirs to sports gear and apparel, reinforcing China's global manufacturing prowess. With logistics, efficiency, and transport infrastructure far superior to Southeast Asian counterparts, China continues to be the go-to source for high-quality, large-scale production. As the world watches the games, Chinese manufacturers will not only meet the demands but also showcase their ability to innovate and lead in the global market. Nikkei Asia. In a groundbreaking move, Japanese pharmaceutical company Ezai is developing a blood test to determine the eligibility of Alzheimer's patients for its drug Locanemab. This innovative step aims to expand Ezai's dementia treatment and care business. Locanemab, co-developed with Biogen and marketed as Lakembi, has shown a 27% reduction in disease progression in clinical trials. Approved in the US, Japan, and China, Ezai anticipates significant global sales, with the drug now available at around 1,000 medical institutions in Japan. However, its usage is currently limited to patients with early-stage Alzheimer's or mild cognitive impairment, necessitating tests for amyloid accumulation in the brain. Existing tests, like positron emission tomography and cerebrospinal fluid tests, are cumbersome and burdensome for patients. Ezai's new blood test technology, developed in collaboration with medical device manufacturers, aims to simplify this process, making it possible to detect amyloid in the blood with high accuracy by fiscal 2026. Additionally, Ezai is working with Teramo to develop a subcutaneous injector for easier administration of Locanemab. As Ezai leads in dementia treatment, it faces competition from Eli Lilly's newly approved Donanemab, which also targets amyloid plaques but has frequent side effects. Ezai's vision extends beyond pharmaceuticals, aiming to create a comprehensive dementia support platform encompassing prevention, diagnosis, and care. With a startup mindset and a focus on efficiency, Ezai plans to expand into Asian markets and become a major industry player with sales exceeding 2 trillion yen. The company is committed to exploring contributions beyond pharmaceuticals, aspiring to be a holistic dementia platform provider. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6DO team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6DO Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6DO team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6DO Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6DO Brief via email. Turn the lights on screen What's the latest scene? Just you and me Laugh and disagree On the couch we sit Talk about the hits News and bits and bits Chat through all the fits Sister Gucci
Sweet, sweet.